好，今天我们邀请到了 IMBA Interactive 创办人跟德共同创办人，他曾经参与了 Mr. Cat、Close Line、甜点王子，还有 Space Cycler 等游戏的音效制作。而今天呢，他要利用 F Mode 跟各位介绍一些游戏音效的设计的技巧，以及以及一些案例。好，让我们欢迎来自新加坡的 Sharon。Hello, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Sharon. So today I'll be talking a lot about uh, audio media. Right? Yeah, just a little bit about my company. We have been we are game audio people. We specialize in game audio, and then we have done many games around Southeast Asia. We came up of、uh, a program called the Gambit Singapore MIT Lab Program, where we are trained in Boston, and then we. Worked with developments,、uh, development people, right from the start all the way to the end. So we understand what is development, and with that we open our new company. Yeah, just a little bit of what we have done this couple of years. This is one of the games that we have done using F Mod, Taiwan game. This is another game. This is not use. This this is not using F Mod. And an arcade game that we just、uh, launched, and Three D Prince One, and now we are doing Three D Prince Two. We are also very excited to be working on with Metronomic. This is、uh, as you, this guy. He is the ex、uh, lead game designer of Final Fantasy Fifteen. One Hasmer from Malaysia, and we're really excited about the new game, New Straight Roads. And we're working with Red Candle on their new title. Okay, let's dive in. So, what is audio middleware? Can I have a show of hands? Anyone knows what is audio middleware? Okay, only one.、Uh, oh yes. Okay, great. So, who's a、um, sound designer here? Okay, who's a composer here? All right, not a lot of people. But so, what are y'all? <laughs> are y'all programmers? Yes. Yes, I need the programmers inside here. And is there any game designers here? Okay, welcome to my talk. So, middleware, okay, audio middleware. It is like what it says. It is a middleware, a middle program that bridges between the programmer, the game engine, and the sound person. There are major middlewares outside. There is F mod and Wise. Today I'll be touching on F mod. Of course, there are other middlewares, but I will not be touching those things. Yeah. Okay. Within an audio middleware, there is events and hooks. So events are will contain audio audio content, and hooks will be things like you trigger. How do you want to control that event? And you call it to stop using game code. Moving on. So when. And why will I need middleware? The main, the top reason for that is that you will free up your programmer. Why? Because your programmer is not a sound designer, and he's not a composer too. Imagine, okay, you are trying to mix the game, and you're telling your programmer, "Oh, I need this frequency here, and I need the high frequencies at 80 hertz. Can you do that for me?" It's gonna be crazy. How are you gonna communicate with a programmer? It's You're trying to like strangle him, actually. So you don't want that. So what it does here, middleware, it bridges between both the sound designer and the programmer. The sound designer doesn't have to understand code, scripting. You just have to go into the program. It's the program looks like a music program. So if any of you, your developers, want to try it, your sound designers may pick it up quite easily because it looks like a sound program. Of course, there are other things that is good for middleware. There are interactive music. You don't have to slap on a 2D music, and that's it. There's a lot of ways to、uh, make your music interesting within a middleware. And other things, advanced things that you can be creative within your game. Okay, today I'll be talking about FMod Studio. A disclaimer: I am not an FMod evangelizer. I am only sharing from my experience. Okay, and I'll be going through very fast. So if you have any questions, you can look for me after later on. I'll be here all the way. And yeah, 
this is within F mod. So in on the left left side, right, you have your event browser, which is where you put your events. This is the place where you will give your programmers the event name and he can trigger and stop the event. And you can categorize it in different folders. The event editor will allow you to edit some sounds and there are, as you can see, all the, bo all the boxes there, there are different instruments and containers and different functions in these boxes. And there are tracks too. It looks exactly like a DAW for music people or sound people. So I don't think it's that hard for them to pick up. Yeah. There is also the 3D preview where you can hear your sounds being spatialized in a 3D uh, place. And the properties where you can put your notes. What is this event about? And uh, the deck where you can put reverbs, you can put delays here, and you can do a lot of stuff here. So without further ado, let me go into F mod. Okay, what you have here is, okay, if this is again the browser and you can already start with your events, 3D events or 2D events. Already made all the events here. I'm not going to go into very technical stuff. I'm just going to show you what are the capabilities of FMOD. Okay? And here, today, I am going to talk about the single instrument, the multi instrument, scatterer instrument, and plug in instrument. In here, this event, we have a single instrument. I'll let you hear it first. Yeah, you hear already different variations inside. Guess what? It's only one sound, but you hear different things. When you open up an instrument, single instrument, it is essentially a box, okay? And you can just drag in your sounds here, and you have this sound here. You can hear the sound and you can already right click and put up a random option and define that range. You see that green line there? That range, right, where you're going to play the pitch randomly. So within just one sound, you already have some, all the variations you need. You won't sound so robotic and static, you know, and you don't have to tell your programmer, oh, I need a container. Can I give you one sound and then you help me? change the pitch. Then your, your programmer will ask you, uh, what, what, what is the number of the pitch? Oh my gosh, it's going to be crazy. But you don't have to do that. Everything is here. And all you have to do is ask your programmer to play. Yeah, as easy as that. And within an event, every event, right, there is this thing here. Let me just show you. The screen is a bit small. Okay, there is this thing. This is the 3D spatializer where you can actually dictate how big your sound is going to sound, how small your sound is going to be. Imagine it as a sphere, okay? When you walk near the sphere, it's going to be louder. When you go away from the sphere, it's going to be softer like, like this. La, you know? Yeah. So, moving on, we have another single instrument. But here, I'm using it differently. It is a loop sound. A loop sound essentially is a sound that is constant and then it doesn't fade off or fade out. But let's hear the loop. You notice it fades in and fades out. Why? Because you have options in this... Um, in this track, you can actually put up AHDSR, which looks like that. This thing here, which will enable you to fade in and fade out a sound. <laughs> you know, the way, and it's smooth, there is no like snaps, like cut and things like that. You know, sometimes, if half the time you're playing a game, okay, 
And half the time you hear like, oh my gosh, it's not going to be the nicest things. Um, your player will definitely feel it. It's not very smooth. So you can do that here. And it's so simple. And over here, even in the single instrument, right, you have this option here. If you don't click on this, it will just... But if you click on this, notice there's a playhead inside the box. Yeah, so there is two playheads. So there's a lot of ways to do a lot of things, depending on what you need. Endless ways, okay? Moving on. This instrument. It is different from the single instrument. You can see it's a multi-instrument. What is it? It's also a container, but now you can put more sounds here. So the same thing, you put more sounds here and you randomize the pitch. So what do you get? You get, instead of three sounds, you get more than 10 sounds. And your players will never know that it is the same footstep or the same sound playing again and again, you know. If you want it more drastic. Yeah, this is a bit extreme. And you can also randomize your volume, which gives you more dynamics in your game. In the natural world, you won't have sounds playing like that constantly. You know, it would be jarring and it's not, yeah, it's not that nice. Yeah, moving on. Okay, you, have, you see here, this is a more advanced version of what you can do with your sounds. It's a, I'll just let you hear it first. Yeah, so there's three sounds here. One is the laser. The second one is a reload sound. The third one is a voice. Hey, it doesn't play. Why? Because in a real life experience, nobody will be shooting a gun every time there's a voice, you know. So you want it natural. So what I did here was, of course, the laser sound, the first layer, you can't have time differences. You want it fixed because that's the first thing you want your players to feel, the first trigger, right? So it's on the dot. It will play. And it's just randomizing uh, the different sounds within this container. The second one you notice, it comes in later, even though it's the same on the same timeline, but it comes in later. So you have options like here, okay? There is tempo for music, there is time. So my, my multi-track here will only come in after 160 milliseconds. And then it will randomize between 160 and 560 milliseconds, which gives you a very natural, um, you know, action. Yeah. And the third one, why does the voice doesn't come in all the time? Because I put a probability percentage on it. So that it comes in sometimes, doesn't come in sometimes. Imagine this used in other areas, not just this uh, um, scenario. You can use it in any other uh, sound effects, depending on how you design. So it's endless, you know, it's really broad how you want to design your sounds. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. This is the rest. I will, I'll be showing you a few examples. For this, right, it is footsteps. So footsteps, let me just show you. Yeah, the knob is up, right? So you definitely hear it. But the rest, there's two layers, rock and sand. You don't hear it. Well, there's a, another option here. I'm going to introduce you something new, which is the parameter option. This tab here, when you press it, you can actually have this parameter and essentially what this does is you can have a new tab here and it can sync, this knob here can sync to the numbers here that will trigger your sounds in however way you want it. It can be effects, it can be automation or volumes, how loud you want it to be, how it fades in. Yeah, so have something here already done. You can see that the number here will sync to this knob. So if I am at zero, my grass footstep 
will definitely, you'll be definitely hearing it. But the moment I move to number one, it will mute, it will fade off, and my rock sounds will come in. And you only have to give the programmer numbers. That's how amazing it is. You can just give him, okay, this is the event, trigger this event, trigger the number, uh, uh, according to the scenarios or where the player is, and you will hear different footsteps. Let me just show you. Yeah. So, next, I'm going to introduce you to Scatterless Instrument. Scatterless Instrument is a very, very cool instrument. I use it for ambience. Imagine you're in a space, okay? Maybe a first person shooter. And then there's many, many things happening at the same time. Are you gonna put every sound in the place to make up that, that space? It's gonna be crazy, right? It's, sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not possible because maybe you can't see the things from afar, but you still want the players to feel that he is in that place and things are happening. So what does Scatterler do? Like its name, it scatters the sound all over you. And you can choose whether it's near you or far away from you. And you can experiment with sounds and it will sound pretty cool. Let me just show you the options you have here. So in this container, again, it's like a multi-instrument. So you can put in as many sounds as you want. And you can control how many times it's going to play, how fast it's going to play. You can control so how far it will be near how near it will be you with you or how far it is from you. Over here I have my wind sounds. Imagine you are in a tornado shit scene. Yeah. I paired it with the parameter so you can see this knob and this knob is synced. hear it here because we are on mono so I'm sorry yeah but in real cases you actually will hear it around you okay yeah so moving on just just now I've shown you footsteps right like how you use your parameters this is the same thing but done in a different way and you can see it all here why um, the only difference is I'm using region transition uh, transition regions and this thing here, transition regions. And it will sync all these, you know, names will sync to the number that I'm going to call. So for now, the default is small explosions. But the moment I call, it will change. Again, your programmer only needs to call numbers. And it's all in one event. You don't have to tell him, I have how many sounds, okay? Can you help me uh, script how many sounds, 20 sounds, 50 sounds, oh my gosh. Uh, if he's busy, I think you need to give him, you, you have to treat him a lot of meals, you know, just to be, just for him to feel okay with you. Yeah, so <laughs> this really makes life a lot easier. Okay, moving on. So for parameters again, just now I've showed you a very simple loop sound, right? But what if now you want something more advanced? You want an introduction sound, and then a loop sound, and then an end sound. You can do it with parameters too. I have synced, uh, I have synced this loop region to a number with the parameter. So I can just, if it's at zero, if it's at zero, zero, right, it will stay here. But the moment you get out of zero, it will end. Because sometimes you can't really control the game. What if the players want to end faster or, or later, you know? Yeah, so this is for real-time sound effects. And the, the programmer just needs to trigger the number to end the sound naturally. So you can hear it. Yeah, 
ends that way. Yeah. So in this example, again, it's using parameters. But this time round, it is pitch. In this uh, tab, which is the parameter, I've already configured this pitch uh, automation. So if you see, let, let's just hear it as it is first. Think of it as you're in a scenario and you want to build tension. And you want to sync to the tension and the timing of like when the player is going to reach a danger zone, right? So you can actually do this. It will sync real time. Still the same sound. can do that. And not only that, you can use your parameters with effects too. Yeah. Yes. Let me show you the effects. It's all here. It will come out. You can place it on the track itself and it will come out. Everything is got to do with right clicking and you can have, you can insert all these things. Next, I'm going to introduce you the plugin instrument, which is it's like a sound generator within the program, which you don't have to put sounds anymore. It has the sound. There is motor and weather. So for motor, you already have a motor sound. And I've already placed different automation on the, the options that you're given in this uh, instrument itself. This knob is synced to all this and it will change accordingly when I put in the numbers. Yeah. There is also the wind sound. So depending on how you want to use all these tools for you, this is just one way, you know, you don't have to follow my way. And moving on to music. Okay, here we have a normal music play. And maybe you have reached the boss level or somewhere that's more complicated. And you want something, you want the music to transit. You can do that. See this is changing. What I did here is this is the layer one, layer two. When I trigger number two, the layer one will go down to, to mute, fade off. The layer two will come up. So you hear two sounds transiting. Seamlessly, okay? And then the third layer is just adding on. How do you tell your programmers this? It's very, very difficult. I think I have to draw every layer and show him. Because I also don't know how to say in, in scripting form. You know, he probably has to calculate numbers. And when I look at it, I also won't understand. So this will, even if your programmer is saying that, okay, maybe I can program things, but it is still good. You have this as the reference. You know, your team will go well, I'm telling you. Yeah. And moving on. Again, this is similar, but it's just layers after adding on to layers. So there's three layers here. The first layer will play by itself. Then after that, when I trigger the parameter, it will play the second layer followed by the third layer. Here it's also music, but it's done in a different way. I'm using multi instruments. 
in here, I have three different melodies. And then over here, I have two melodies. And each multi-instrument represents a game scene itself. You can see it straight away here. The rest of the others, the other events, sometimes you can't see it straight away because it's on represented on different tabs. But for here, it is represented in the first tab straight away. So the melody will just randomize when it finishes playing until the player moves on to the next scene. So when that happens, it will change. And it changes seamlessly again because of the volume envelopes that I talked to you about. Okay, you can adjust and it will be very smooth. Yeah. Okay, with that, there's a lot more things you can do with FMOD. It is free, you can download it, you can try it, you can put sounds in and just like really play hardcorely. Okay, but I've, I'm done with my demo. So now I will talk to you about who plays, who uses FMOD. So these are some games that uses FMOD, whether it is small games, triple A games. Yeah, I will encourage you to do that. And FMOD for indies, I think it is free. If you are under a certain budget, please use it. It's free. Wise also. Okay, and if you want to know more about Game Audio, please go on to have a Twitter account. Hashtag Game Audio. There is tons of things you can read from. There is also a new um, hashtag. It's called Game Audio Tips. I go to that every day. I learn a lot of things because there are many, many great people in Game Audio uh, community globally. They are all very inclusive. We are very for uh, teaching and, and giving. Yeah, and there is also... Game Audio Taiwan. So if you're interested, look up on Facebook, join the group, talk to the audio people. They're very nice. You know, they won't bite you. They will, they will be more than glad to share with you. And if you have any questions or you want to look for me, I'm very friendly. So <laughs> you can find me on Twitter. You can direct uh, message me on Twitter. You can look up for me uh, through email as well. Yeah, I'll be around. My other friend is going to come up for the talk. He is the main person for Game Audio Taiwan. So if you want to see people at Game Audio Taiwan, he's the person to look for. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much. I'll answer questions after his session. So stay around if you have questions. Thank you very much.